my top requested recipes is always my rolls. I have done a couple videos on them, but I feel like my techniques and a couple ingredient amounts even has changed over time. And I feel like I am so quick and efficient at it now that I wanted to quickly remake my roll video. So you guys, I'm going to be teaching you how to make super, super simple homemade dinner rolls. You guys, when I say simple, I mean simple. There are five ingredients. That's all you need for this recipe. Six if you include water, but I feel like water is kind of just like water, you know? So six ingredients, including water. The only major things you need is you need a cup and you need a tablespoon. Um, keeps it super simple. A large bowl for mixing everything, a smaller bowl to proof your yeast. That's about it, you guys. So simple, these are delicious. It does make a lot. It makes a lot. I made this recipe last week and I made 32 rolls and two loaves of bread. So it makes a lot, which for us is a really good thing because we are usually with extended family. We have a large family, there's a lot of us. I like to have this much when I make this recipe because I love to make homemade loaves of bread for the week right here. There's just something about homemade bread. It tastes better, it feels better. I feel like it's a lot easier to digest than the stuff you buy at the store. So. We're just gonna get on into it. Hoping to make this super short and sweet for those of you who are wanting to follow along, let's get going. So very first, you need a smaller bowl and you are going to put three tablespoons of yeast. It does make a lot, but you can half the recipe. So if you are halving it because you don't need as much bread as we do, just use a tablespoon and a half of yeast. But for the full recipe, we are going to be using three tablespoons. And I know that someone's going to ask what kind of yeast. Honestly, any kind is fine. I usually use the active dry yeast, but it'll, it'll all work for you guys, so don't stress too much over that. So after the three tablespoons of yeast, you're gonna get one tablespoon of sugar. I have my big buckets of flour and sugar down here on my kitchen floor. So one tablespoon of sugar, and then you're going to put a cup of water. Now you guys, this part is kind of important. You want lukewarm water as if you were baking a baby in it. So think of that. Test it on your wrist, make sure it's not too hot, but you definitely don't want it cold. And the reason being is because you don't want to kill the live active yeast in here. So one cup of lukewarm water. So I've got the perfect temperature here. And you guys, it doesn't have to be like precise, precise. We just don't want hot or cold. So again, don't stress too much. Just get a nice warm temperature of water. Um, to mix the yeast, sugar and water, I just like to use a fork. It's quick and I feel like it gets out all the lumps of yeast really quickly. So just give it a nice mix. It doesn't have to be perfect, you guys. Nothing about this recipe has to be perfection. This is very, very easy, doable for anyone, I think. Okay. So once you have all three of those things incorporated well, you are just going to sit this aside and that is going to bubble and rise and pretty much double in size. So wait for about 10 to 15 minutes for that to happen. Um, but watch it because it can bubble and overflow out of the bowl you have it in. So don't take off for like a half hour and leave that there. While we're waiting, we are going to put all of our dry ingredients into a large bowl. And you guys, I like to use a dough hook to mix my bread. For the longest time, all I used was a wooden spoon. It was my favorite kitchen tool and I still love my wooden spoon. But a dough hook is like a wooden spoon and a whisk combined in one. They're super inexpensive on Amazon. That's where I got mine. Um, it came in a pack of two and I've had them for years and they're still in great condition. So if you would like a dough hook, I recommend them, but you do not need one. So first dry ingredient we are going to put into this bowl is 10 cups of flour. You guys, I know that's a lot, but like I said, it makes a lot. So if you're cutting it in half, just do five, but 10 cups of flour into the large bowl. And again, there is nothing precise about my measurements with the flour because I usually end up adding about a half a cup or three fourths of a cup more as I'm eating it. So roughly 10 cups. All right, you guys, once you have the 10 cups of flour in your large bowl, um, the next ingredient is sugar, and it is one cup of sugar. I know that sounds like a lot. I promise it doesn't make this roll sweet, 
but if you want to use less sugar, you can. I would recommend using some of them. So one cup of sugar. All right, and the third and final dry ingredient is salt, and it is one tablespoon of salt. So like I said, it's either a tablespoon or a cup. It's really simple to remember. I don't know the last time I looked at my cookbook for this recipe because it really is very simple. So now in this bowl, we have just flour, sugar, and salt, and then I just give that a quick stir to get things a little bit more evenly incorporated before we mix in our wet ingredients. One of my biggest tips is to clean up as you go. So I already put the yeast away after I used it and I'm going to put the salt away. I don't know you guys. I'm having a cheer Thanksgiving dinner tonight. I'm a cheerleading coach for a high school team and we are having a little Thanksgiving dinner with my team and the other coaches. So that's what these are for. So kind of wanting to keep the house picked up so I'm gonna put things away as I go. Alrighty, as you can see, the yeast mixture is super foamy, super bubbly. It has doubled in size. I removed my wedding ring and my watch because this part of your hands are going to get dirty and you're just gonna have to get right in there. So make sure you wash up good. But the three wet ingredients we're going to be adding is the yeast mixture, some oil. You can use whatever kind of oil you want. I just always use vegetable oil and water. So just water, oil, and the yeast mixture, and that's it, you guys. That's all that's going inside this bread. So I just pour this whole thing right in here. Try to scrape out as much as you can. Now, this is the only part that's not a full cup, and it's a half cup of oil. Half a cup of oil, and then again, with the water, you want it lukewarm. You don't want it too hot, you don't want it too cold, so nice lukewarm water, and we're gonna do three cups of water. Ooh. And I just like to pour my water around the edges to try to get any flour that's up on the walls down there. And then you guys get to mix it. So that is all to this recipe except for kneading, rising, and then forming your actual rolls. That's all the ingredients, that's all the steps to actually creating the dough. And I'm just going to try and get all of these things incorporated well. And this part is going to look kind of crazy a little bit. Don't worry about that. That's how it's supposed to look right now. Stir, I'd say probably for about a minute or two just to get things mixed in really well. If you are new to my channel, hello, welcome. So glad you're here. I don't look this tired and crazy every day. I coached cheerleading this morning and then got all of my kiddos out the door to school, my three older ones. I have five kids. I haven't washed my face or put makeup on or anything like that yet today, so this is what we're looking like, but you guys, it's okay, because it's real life, and we're all fucking beautiful, just how we are, right? Every single one of us. I hope you know that. This is what my dough is looking like right now. It looks a little bit rough, but that's okay. That's how it's supposed to look. So now you wanna let your dough sit for like 10 minutes before you knead it and make it smooth. This part really is important. It makes a difference. I don't know how, but it does. So I just set this aside for 10 minutes, wash my hands, wash up any dishes, and then we will get kneading. Okay, I have got everything cleaned up and put away and I'm going to start kneading this dough. It doesn't look much different than the last time you saw it. Um, you guys, this part, don't stress about it because I know that sometimes making things from scratch, like bread or pie doughs, pie doughs used to scare me really bad. Um, it can be intimidating, so don't let this intimidate you. It's not scary. My dough is feeling a little bit sticky. Like I said, I usually end up adding flour here every time when I start kneading. Again, we're not precise. I just take a little handful, sprinkle some over the top, and I keep kneading. With your bread dough, you don't want it dry. Like, you don't want it where you can just sit and work with it like Play-Doh, because then your bread will be dry. You do want it a little bit tacky and sticky, but not so tacky and sticky that you can't work with it. Oh, can you go ask Sissy to help you? Okay, so it's looking like we're gonna need just a little bit more. My two-year-old is in here, and he, he's our baby. I love the stage so much. Okay, I think this is almost good to go. So as you guys can see, it doesn't need a lot of work. Don't overwork it, don't overthink it. 
Just try to get it smooth and well mixed. Do one more little sprinkle. And then I think she'll be good to go, you guys. Perfect texture, perfect amount of flour. Let me wash off my hands so I can show you exactly how stick the dough is. Okay, you guys, here's the dough, what it's looking like before I'm gonna leave it to rise for about an hour. As you can see, it's like a little bit tacky, but it's not sticking to me and getting my hands dirty. So that is perfection. Just make sure she's in a nice round little mound. And then you're just gonna take a thin cotton cloth. This one's a little damp from me washing the hands. So just take a thin cotton cloth, cover it, set it aside somewhere warm, and just let it be for about an hour. All right, you guys, it's been an hour. This is my favorite part because this is the shaping and the rolling out of the rolls. I used to just shape them in little balls. So then they'd rise and they'd just be little round dinner rolls. However, I have found the more that I make these that I like to roll them out like crescent rolls. So I roll my dough out in a circle, cut it with a pizza cutter in triangles like it's a pizza, roll them up. I'm gonna show you how I do that. But I have just decided that when I roll them out like that, they look a lot more uniform and a little more professional than if I just try to form a ball because then they're all different sizes no matter what technique I use. So roll these out however you want, but I'm going to show you really quick the way that I do it. First, I'm going to get out two of my big cookie sheets or my baking pans. Okay, I forgot my main cookie sheets are being used right now. So we're gonna use my old ones, which you guys, they work great. Now to grease my baking sheets, and I do this before I start rolling out so the pans are just ready to put the rolls, rolls on them. I just grease them with butter. Stick of butter. I keep the paper on one half so I can hold it, and I just rub it along my pan like this, you guys. Get it nice and coated in butter. It helps with the flavoring. Just gonna get this nice and buttered. We have 20 cheerleaders and five coaches, so that's 25 people. I like to plan for about two rolls a person, which would be about 50 rolls, just to be safe, because rolls are delicious. So I've got those two pans buttered and then I'm just going to set this aside because I'm going to use it again in a minute. I already washed my countertop. Just so while I am rolling this dough out, it doesn't stick to my countertop. Like I showed you, it is still a little bit tacky and sticky. And I just like to leave a little bit of flour here because we'll roll out several different little circles of dough. I'm going to just punch this dough down because it's been rising for an hour, collect it all into a ball. I'm going to cut it in half twice so that it's in fours. I have one of these dough scrapers. You can use a knife, whatever you have on hand. Just cut the dough into four. So I just cut that in half once and then I'm gonna cut each of those halves in half. Our first little dough ball. I'm gonna roll that around just a little bit so that it's easier to roll into a circle. And as you guys can see, a little bit of dough is sticking to my hands. But that's good because that means we'll have nice moist rolls. So just plop that down in your dough and I'm going to grab my rolling pin because I forgot. I'm going to flour it a little bit so that the dough doesn't stick to my rolling pin. We are just going to roll this out pretty thinly. Because I roll it out like crescent dough rolls, as the dough rises it can unfold and you can lose your shape. So I have found that they keep their shape a lot better if I roll this out fairly thin. Flip it just a couple times. And as you can see, even though it was still pretty sticky, it is very easy to work with with some flour on your countertop and your rolling pin. And don't worry about the shape. It does not have to be a perfect circle, just roughly. The edges are not going to matter. Okay, I've got it all rolled out. It's nice and thin. As you can see, nowhere near a perfect circle but it's perfect for what we're doing. And you're gonna slice it just like you would a pizza. It is not going to make one ounce of difference on how they taste. Now once you have it cut, just start rolling. So start from the big end, roll all the way towards the middle. And then something that you have to do here to keep their shape 
is pinch the very tip, the pointy tip of the dough, pinch it into that roll before you place it on the pan so that as it rises, it does not lose its awesome shape. You guys, these are so easy, so quick. Make sure to give it a pinch so it doesn't unravel. All right, you guys, I have two rounds of rolls rolled out. And by rounds, I mean a circle that I rolled out and then cut like a pizza. So it filled two pans. I did want to say that how I had you cut the dough into four equal parts. Each of those are one circle of rolls, like I just showed you. Or you can use each of those as like a loaf of bread, anything like that. If you wanna do two rounds of rolls, two loaves of bread, three rounds of rolls, one loaf of bread, whatever but that just gives you like a really good amount for either making a round of rolls or a loaf of bread. I've used half the dough, half is still in here, and I'm going to do all rolls this time. Now that I have the rolls rolled out, I just preheated my oven to 350. That's what I like to bake them at. I am at a very high elevation, and so if you want, I like my rolls soft and golden brown, but if you want them a little crispier, bake them at 375 or 400, and then just keep an eye on them, you guys, because baking time is going to vary based on your location and your elevation and how brown you want them. So um, I will let you guys know how long I cook mine, but in the meantime, while they're going to do one more little round of rising, probably about a half hour, so I'm going to cover each of those pans with a cotton cloth again and let them just rise there on the top of the warm oven that's preheating, and then I'll put them in to bake. Two quarters of the total dough makes 32 rolls. So I have 32 rolls rising, and like I said, I want at least 50 because there will be 25 people. All right, I have all of the dough rolled out. It is gone. It made four large pans of rolls. And you guys, I'm so excited. These are my favorite. I can't wait to feed them to all of the girls tonight. It's almost about time to put the first tray in. So I'm gonna show you guys how much they've risen. But you guys, that's all there is to it. So easy, six ingredients, nothing has to be perfect, nothing has to be precise. And I promise the more you do it and the more you get comfortable with it, they will get lighter and fluffier and more moist and they are so delicious. Not to toot my own horn, but you guys, I'm not kidding. I am asked to bring these everywhere me and my family go. So they are delicious on their own. They make incredible for sandwiches, dipped in gravy, dipped in mashed potatoes, whatever you wanna do with your roll, they're amazing. But uh, let's check on the first batch that we rolled out and see how much they've risen so far. Okay, so here is the first batch. As you can see, they have not risen a ton, but they definitely are more puffy and round. And I think it's about time. They will rise a lot more in the oven while they're baking, so I'm gonna put these in now. My first pan just came out of the oven. As you can see, they are nice and golden brown. And remember that stick of butter we used to butter our baking sheets earlier? Well, I have just melted it in a glass and then I take my little silicone brush and I just butter the tops of the rolls right when they come out. Um, I used to just take my stick of butter and rub it on them while they were still hot, but I feel like this more evenly distributes butter. So just take the rest of that stick of butter that you use to butter the dishes, melt it, brush it on top of your rolls, and then you guys, there you have it. It's that easy. Okay, I wanted you guys to have a little close up. Do you see how beautifully these cook? They're nice and light brown on the bottom, golden brown on top. Guys, they are so soft and moist and delicious. Please, please, please make these this holiday season. Tag me in a post so that I can see and reshare and we can just enjoy our delicious homemade rolls that we created. So there you have it, you guys. Quick six ingredient delicious homemade rolls. I promise they're gonna make your house smell heavenly. I promise you're going to be requested to bring them to every family gathering or get together. They're so, so yummy. I forgot to mention that we are at 6,500 feet in elevation, so we're pretty high, and I baked them at 350 for, for 15 minutes. So, if you are around the same elevation, 350 for 15 minutes to get this perfect golden brown, if not, you're gonna have to mess around with it for a little bit, but just keep an eye on it. Pull them out when they start to look brown or however done you want them. But you guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that you are able to make these. And if you do, please, please tag me on social media. I would love to see it. And I hope that you guys have an incredible day. Thanks for watching. 
I know that's kind of a lot. This tablespoon does not fit in here. Hold oh, please. You guys, I'm off on a roll. Now that I have the dough 